Hey, Paul here, doing a quick and dirty Royal Rumble 2016 recap and review. This is, I, I mean, I just rushed home from work because I work nights, and I quickly watched it because I couldn't watch it before I went to work. So there's not going to be any graphics, there's not going to be any cool stuff, you know, I'm just going to get right to it. So it opened up with uh, Michael Cole, Byron Saxton, and JBL. And throughout the whole Royal Rumble, the one thing I noticed more than anything else is that Byron Saxton, as a commentator, was largely a non-entity. I kept forgetting he was actually commenting, except when Michael Cole or JBL would actually specifically talk to him, and then he would say something. I mean, later on in the Rumble, The Miss joins commentary, and he makes a bigger impact, and that's saying something. Maybe they should have gotten that new guy. I haven't actually heard him yet, because I, I haven't watched the regular weekly shows in a little bit. Uh, but I do know what's going on on them to the most degree. I just haven't actually seen them. So maybe for Fastlane next month in February, they replace Saxton with the new guy, and we'll see how that turns out, okay? All right, so the first match, it was Dean Ambrose, who's the Intercontinental Champion, defending against Kevin Owens. Fight Owens Fight. And this is for, obviously, Ambrose's Intercontinental, Intercontinental Championship. In the last man standing, the rule is simple. You beat the guy till he cannot answer a 10 count from the referee. There are no pinfalls, no submissions, and largely speaking, not a lot of rules. You can bring weapons, and these guys do. And, uh, yeah, this was a phenomenal way to kick off the Royal Rumble. These guys put on a hell of a match. Um, yeah, I mean, I've read that it was fan-friendly, um, yeah, as far as the violence goes, because there wasn't, of course, any blood, it's still maintaining the PG rating, and these guys just, I mean, they went at, at it, bell to bell. Ultimately, Ambrose retains, de defeating uh, Kevin Owens by putting him through a double stack, like two, two tables that cracked, and, and, and you know, <laughs> yeah, no, nobody's getting up after that one, certainly not after 10 count. Uh, it was amazing that Ambrose could even stand and walk after that. It was just kind of crazy. Um, the best part is that this match, no matter what was going on, it never felt like overkill. It never felt that Ambrose and Owens were overdoing it. Uh, everything seemed to be planned. The only kind of problem I had, and it's because whether I've been casually watching wrestling like I have for the last couple of years, or I grew up watching it with my dad, there's a couple of spots, especially in a match like a last man standing, or a tables or chairs, etc., these kind of matches that are very telegraphed. And the double stack of tables, which was set up by Kevin Owens, isn't used for several minutes. And even as he was setting it up, I knew, and I had never read the spoilers. I didn't want to be spoiled. I actually just wanted to watch the match. And I knew that Kevin Owens was going to go through the tables. What I did not know was that was how it was going to end. Um, yeah. Um, 
I I would definitely consider that. I'll throw in ratings. Normally, I don't like to do so uh, because I think they're horribly cr cliche. But this is the rumble. I'll make an exception. Um, and of course, you people on YouTube that are watching this and and my followers, subscribers. You, of course, don't know that I don't do ratings, but my real-world friends, you know, and family, they know that I don't do ratings. I just, it, I just, I couldn't be bothered. Uh, I leave them for other people, and I just, they're too subjective. But, make an exception, I'm going to give this one four and a half out of five, because they didn't overdo it, it wasn't crazy, it didn't run too long, and... It set the pace for the pay-per-view. So the next match was The New Day, represented by Kofi Kingston and Big E Langston. Well, I think they're just calling him Big E now. And they had Xavier Woods on the side versus The Uzos, Jimmy and Jay. Um... Of course, they're related to the, and I'm going to botch this, I'm sorry, the Anoa family. Um, I think Rikishi is their dad, and, um, uh, uh, I mean, like, the, they're related to The Rock and Roman Reigns and Rikishi and the Wild Samoans, if you want to go back that far, and, yeah. Lots and lots of, of that family uh, has been around. Uh, the New Day, well, I don't know if they're supposed to be the faces or they're supposed to be the heels. I assume people watching this video will know the difference. A face is a good guy. A heel is a bad guy. But the live crowd um, kept cheering for the New Day, and booing for the Uzos. Even when the Uzos were doing the ooh, and then the audience would go, oh, zo! Um, and that was about the only time that the audience actually treated Jimmy and Jay like good guys. Other than that, um, yeah, New Day pretty much stole that match. Um... In all intents, I mean, sure, it's officially two-on-two, two, but New Day does have a third member. And, yeah, they retained their uh, tag team champions. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, this match, um, uh, for rating, I'm going to go with, uh, say... The match itself, probably nothing really spectacular. I would say two and a half, but I'm going to go all the way up to three and a half just because of the antics of the New Day. I mean, they, like, they're so entertaining to watch. It's just crazy. Um, let's see. The next matchup, um, Alberto Del Rio, the champion, uh, is defending his United States Championship against Kalisto. And for what I've read and seen clips on YouTube uh, from the official WWE uh, site, that they've been trading this championship back and forth for the last couple of weeks. I'm not sure if I really like... I mean, the hot potatoing or hot shotting the, the title from one guy to the next and then back and then forth and stuff like that. I mean, sure, it makes the two guys look like they really, really want to hang on to it and they're on par and and can compete with each other and hang with each other and, and bring a, uh, the best out of each other. But on the flip side, it does feel that um, that the writing staff, because of course professional wrestling is scripted, don't seem to know what to do with Alberto Del Rio and Kalisto. Um, they're both luchadors. Kalisto is actually 
part of a tag team uh, that wrestles more in a luchador style, but not fully in a luchador style. Uh, but his partner, uh, Sankara, is currently out with injury. Um, yeah, uh, these guys, they really worked at it. They, uh, they tried their very best. Um, but I really wasn't really sold on this. And it was simply because I knew, at least reading, even though if I hadn't watched it, about the hot shotting of the title. Um, so unlike the previous match, that brings it down a whole point. I was going to go with about, say, three and a half or so, say three and three and a quarter. So let's let's say two and a quarter match. Um, the match itself, the two guys, they were fine, but the story was definitely lacking. Okay, so traditionally with WWE, the audience usually takes a concession break during women's matches, or as the WWE calls them, divas matches now. But more and more, the audience is starting to see that the women can wrestle, can be very entertaining, and they can put on often better matches than the guys can. And the Divas Championship, currently held by Charlotte, who is the daughter of two-time Hall of Famer Ric Flair, was defending against Becky Lynch, an Irish woman. And this match was amazing. Um, obviously, it's not a last woman match. It's just a straight-up wrestling match. But these guys pretty much put on a clinic. Charlotte and Becky pretty much showed how to uh, put on a woman's or a man's wrestling match within the constraints of the WWE creative system and their uh, internal, uh, what do they call it, um, where where they basically ban a bunch of moves because they've decided that they're way too dangerous and probably are right. Um, so uh, it finishes with, and you, you notice I'm not really spoiling the matches because if you want to see them, you should actually see them. But it it finishes with a cheap finish, compliments of Charlotte's dad, uh, Ric Flair, and that's pretty much how it should end, because Charlotte is currently playing the heel, the bad guy, and should get cheap victories. Uh, if if they win cleanly and, and there's no interference, no shenanigans, that can work on an infrequent basis, uh, and it shouldn't actually happen regularly. And since Charlotte is a recent heel, uh, I have no problems with the shenanigans. Um, so uh, this match, I would say probably say four stars. But the most interesting thing about this was that after the match, Sasha Banks, the boss, who inside pro tip, is actually related to, um, well, I'll remember in a minute, and I'll come back to it, but um, Snoop Dogg, or whatever he's going by these days. And actually, if you look at Sasha Banks and you look at Snoop Dogg, um, you can see the resemblance, although obviously Sasha is a much better looking human being. Um, but Sasha comes out, seemingly to congratulate Charlotte on her victory and then sets up a post-match, I mean, they call it an angle, so basically an event happens and Sasha Banks basically puts her stamp into saying, hey, I, I want to wrestle for the title and it was the perfect setup. Um, so, yeah, the match was four 
and um, the the after events, great stuff. So uh, then we got the the big event, the main event uh, for the Royal Rumble is the Rumble itself, and I might actually do a special video just for the Rumble uh, because it contains so much, so much goes on. But um, the the interesting thing for the first time ever, uh, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship was being defended in the Rumble itself. Traditionally, uh, what this is going in is the champion has a one-on-one -on -one or a triple threat or something, some other match, and then 30 guys wrestle in the Rumble for a title shot at WrestleMania. So they changed it up this year, and the current incumbent champ champion, Roman Reigns, had to defend the title. And not only that, he started at the number one position and of course they announced the number two person right away and then every 90 seconds a new person joins um, there was a lot going on in this year's rumble um, because of the depleted roster due to injury um, and a lot of stars that the WWE would probably like to sign are actually contracted with other companies. Um, they kind of had to dig deep within their own roster to, I mean, they can easily fill 30 guys, but 30 interesting guys, because you can't just put a bunch of guys in there that the audience knows will never win the thing. Uh, you're going to put a few guys like that in there, usually for entertainment value, but you need some guys that are genuine threats, former champions, um, guys that have wrestled for the championship but not won, so they've come these close, right? Um, yeah, so ultimately... Uh, again, I'm going to try and stay away from the spoiler um, about who won the, the whole thing. But I will say this. Entering at number three, AJ Styles, who was recently from New per Japan Pro Wrestling, and he's been in Ring of Honor, and... TNA or Impact Wrestling considers him a TNA original because he was there for the beginning up until about the last two or three years when he joined New Japan. Uh, and as a trivia bit, AJ Styles has actually wrestled for the WWE on one of their D, E, or F shows, you know more than a decade ago and at the time nobody really knew who he was nobody knew how good he would be and whatnot well now internationally he is a multi-time heavyweight champion um, and he made his de debut or re-debut officially I guess uh, in the number three spot in tonight's world uh, Wrestling Entertainment Royal Rumble 2016 and uh, I mean yeah it's scripted for how long he's going to be in there and everything like that and who he'll toss out and who he will be tossed out by and all that but in between those plot points there's a whole range of things that he can do um, you know, all sorts of different spots. He, They can do tease spots about him teasing to throw somebody out and tease spots of him almost being thrown out and it happened a lot. And He brought a fair bit of offense and a tremendous amount of charisma and entertainment to this match. And uh, I, I can see him uh, 
I mean, the, the audience, oh my God, the audience was totally cheering for him. They knew exactly who he was, and they should be. And I mean, this guy is closing in on 20 years in the wrestling business, and he is a major player, and it, it shows. And the WWE, to their credit, let him just be as his nickname is called, the Phenomenal One. He was just truly amazing. Uh, this match, uh, I mean, I didn't read the spoilers. Um, but to me, not reading the spoilers, I only knew half of how this was going to end. The other half, I suspected, but I didn't actually know for sure. But ultimately, it tells a bigger story. And keeping in mind that the Royal Rumble is the official start to the road to WrestleMania. And what a hell of a full first step. Um, yeah, if this is any indication then some of the weaker WrestleManias that we've had recently, probably not so much, and we'll get a much stronger event out of this. And I see big things for AJ Styles, big things for the WWE, and big things for their top roster of, of like, the main eventers. And that's exactly where we should be. Um... I wasn't happy with the final victor, but I can live with it because I know where they're going. And keep in mind, even if I did read the spoilers, nobody knows what the spoilers are for, I get, well, tonight's live WWE Raw, because it hasn't happened yet. It's live. So there are no spoilers. And then they don't film SmackDown until Tuesday. And I mean, I think they air it on Thursday or Friday. But this is Monday. So they haven't done SmackDown yet. And they haven't done the next couple of weeks. And they haven't done the next pay-per-view, Fastlane. And obviously, they haven't done the WrestleMania in, in March. So right now, I, I could have avoided spoilers... Um, about the the rumble itself because it actually finished while I was getting ready and driving to work, uh, so I couldn't watch it, and I didn't want to start watching it and then interrupt and whatnot. I wanted to get the whole thing when I got home, and that's exactly what I've done. So on that note. Uh, I have a related video, and I'll, I'll put in an annotation that links to it, about 16, no, well, 16 wrestlers that I predicted would not be in this year's Royal Rumble. Historically, there's always surprises. This year, I, and maybe because I've been you know, interested in wrestling for so long, there wasn't really any real shocks to me. Um, in my case, I kind of, uh, well, I, I mean, I could go to Google News Sports section anytime in the last three weeks, and I would have known that AJ Styles had left New Japan and joined WWE. Um, this was not a spoiler. Uh, his contract was up. He was looking for new options, whether to renew his existing contract or go elsewhere, and he ended up choosing the E, and that wasn't real. I, I don't count that as, as a spoiler. I don't count that as a surprise entrant. A surprise entrant, uh, and I, mean, I, I mean, he wasn't on my won't debut list, because I thought there was like a 
time, a tiny little chance of seeing Bill Goldberg, but I would have been totally shocked to see Goldberg return. And if he had, shock, you know, because I wouldn't have been expecting it at all. Um, AJ, I did expect, although they could have delayed him till later on tonight on Raw, I'm glad they didn't. Um, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, unlike the Rumbles 2014 and 2015, which ended on very sour notes, this year, I, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs up, should watch it. It's a great way to start the road to WrestleMania.